you being shaken, I will not be shaken. Come on, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. Nothing's going to move me. Nothing's going to get me sidetracked. Nothing's going to get me off course. Come on, I, you got, can you do that one more time? Just that little, I will not be shaken. Somebody got to get that in their spirit. Somebody, some, that went over somebody's I head. You got to get that in your spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. against anxiety, depression. Come on. Because Jesus got you. Thank you, Jesus. There's power in that name. Healing in that name. Deliverance in that name. There's nothing Jesus can do. And we thank you for this time of worship. Now bless this time in the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us say together. Amen and amen. I'm excited to be here with you today. Come on, man. We, let's give a shout out to our Pastor Marco, Pastor Lisa. What an amazing job that's happening here in our atmosphere. I am so honored to be with you. Many of you know I'm Pastor Todd. I've been in Pomona the last couple of years and uh, got invited back to bring a, a word today. And so I'm excited to be here. I am, I am excited to be here with you today. And we have a word from the Lord. Come on, somebody. We, we are here to lift you up, build you up, and continue this great work in this great series. Thank you guys so much, praise team. What it, come on, give it up one more time for our praise team leading us in worship. Come on, they, didn't, they weren't here to entertain us. They led us in worship, and we are grateful for that, Pastor uh, Christian and the other pastors of the roster. We just praise God for you, and, and it's just, again, an honor to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know what, this... This amazing, I'm just honored because the theme, uh, the, the theme that we're on right now is a healthy family. A healthy family. Have you been following along? Have you been applying what you've been learning? Oh, then that means your family ain't going to be healthy. <laughs> you, got to, you got to practice this stuff, right? You got to apply it. And uh, so uh, today, uh, I'm, I'm honored. I, got, I think my dad, I saw him somewhere around here. There he is, right there on the front row. Uh, my Aunt Maddie is here. My wife Kathy's over here on the other side. Now, in the, in the morning service, I mentioned my dad, but I, it wasn't a sermon, a sermon about him. I didn't want to throw him under the bus. <laughs> and uh, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. <laughs> but but uh, 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 today I have a, t a message for you that I titled, The Balancing Act for the Family. The Balancing Act for for the family. Do you know that having a family, there takes a, a, it's a balancing act? That means there's a lot of things that have to be balanced to be able to manage a family. Come on, you, and you got to be able to balance these things out in order to have a successful family. If you don't have balance, then you, don't, you show me a family without balance, I'll show you a family that's not succeeding. So, do you know that God has established an order that leads to a healthy family uh, and a balanced family? God has an order. Now, we know the world has an order, 
But we, we, let's scratch that. Let's look at what God's order says to have a healthy family because the world is getting further and further away. Matter of fact, Satan is on an all-out mission to destroy the family that God instituted. So it's going to take us to make sure that we stay in line with what God has to say about family. Let the world know, no, we're not buying that. We're buying into what God has to say about having a healthy and a balanced family. This word healthy family here is a, uh, somebody going to have a hard time with this because they're going to be like, is that what a healthy family look like? <laughs> it's a family that have cohesiveness. That ain't us. <laughs> a family that communicates. Well, we need help in that area. <laughs> Parents leading by example. Conflict management. And a family that sets clear expectations and limits. So positive family relationships are built on also quality time. Working together and showing an appreciation for one another. Come on, can you just appreciate? Come on, some, just appreciate your family. Just appreciate your loved one. Now, I know that this sounds, what, impossible, but it can be done with family balance, with family balance. Now, I wanted, you to, I wanted to break down this word balance. Balance is something that is produced, is something that is used to produce an equilibrium and counterpoise. Equilibrium. Anybody have... Anybody been, had the equilibrium got off? I remember one time I was at a funeral. We went downstairs to have the repast, and I remember sitting there. I was good, but then all of a sudden, everything started getting woozy. <laughs> Nobody else knew, but I was like, something ain't right. And I started praying because I thought I was just going to fall over out the chair and hit the floor, <laughs> and they'd be waking me up in the hospital somewhere. My equilibrium got off, and what was getting ready to happen was a great fall. When we are unbalanced, when we are when our equilibrium is off, there is a potential for a great fall. I'm just trying to help somebody. So look at this word counterpoise. Counterpoise is a factor or force or influence that balances or neutralizes another. So I am considered the counterpoise to this Bible. That's on my head. Now it's important for me to maintain balance. Because if I can't maintain balance, then this, this Bible has the potential to fall. So I am the counterpoise to the balance that I'm bringing to this book, if I, to this Bible. If, if I get off balance and this Bible falls, it's going to be a great fall and there's going to be great damage done to those that I'm supposed to be influencing. Oh, I'm just trying to help somebody. Come on, you got to be balanced. <laughs> You have to maintain a balance in your life that's going to bring about a, ba a balance in your family. Now, so here is God's order to the heads or heads of the family that is something we teach. And we teach this even in our marriage counseling here at The Way. That, you know, and it is, so, some of you are going to be challenged with these, but, but I'm here to let you know you can do it. Come on, it's going to be a little different than what you used to, but you can do it if you want balance. How many of us are experiencing an unbalanced family? You don't have to raise your hand because they might be sitting next to you. <laughs> like, what, what? I thought we were good. <laughs> that you unbalanced. Because <laughs> most times we think we good, we, we that think we good are unbalanced. <laughs> I'm going to give you four keys to the order of balance in the family. And, th and this is the order I want to give it to you. And I'm going to have you say them with me. Number one is God, family, employment. Oh, somebody had a hard time with that one, but let's just keep going. And ministry. Say it with me again. God, family, employment, ministry. Oh, somebody got to get in their spirit. Somebody, didn't say, somebody was hesitant on one of them. Come on, you got to break, break that curse in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it with me. I can't hear somebody. God, God. Family. family, what, employment, employment. 
ministry. Oh, somebody got set free right there, Christian. Somebody got a breakthrough. So let's look at first God. Let's look at God first. According to Matthew 22, 37 and 38, it says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is what? The greatest and first commandment. So in order for everything else to be balanced in your life, you have to have a balanced relationship with the Lord. That comes, in, in, there's a scripture out of uh, uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 that says you need to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You need to believe in your heart that God has raised Christ from the dead. And then it says you shall be saved, right? That, that gets you started. That gets you on the right track <laughs> in regards to balancing the rest of your life. Without God in your life, there's no balance possible. So here it is. It says you must be in a love relationship with the Lord. This is done through salvation. According to Matthew 6, he said this, but seek first, seek when? Not last. Seek first the kingdom of God above what? Everything else. Everything else follows your love relationship with God. And what? And live righteously, and he will do what? Give you everything you need. Come on, anybody need a balanced house? Anybody need a balanced family? Anybody need a balanced wife? Anybody need a balanced son? Anybody need a balanced daughter? Come on, somebody. It starts right here. And, and here it is. It says, it goes on to say what? what, what did he, I want to talk to you about the areas that you need to be developing in your personal relationship with Jesus to be able to have a healthy family. I said, what type of relationship? Per person, this is your job. Come on, somebody say, my job. <laughs> you need to be having personal prayer time with the Lord. You need to have a personal Bible study or devotional time with the Lord. We're talking about developing your relationship. You need to, have, you need to be attending a small group Bible study. We have a thing here, what? Who, sir, who, who, what uh, uh, is it, whose discipleship group are you in and whose discipleship group are you, are you leading? Are you leading a group and are you in a group, right? That should be happening in your life for your personal spiritual growth. You should be attending church regularly for worship and fellowship. Well, my wife don't want to come, so? <laughs> well, my husband don't want to come. Leave him. <laughs> I got to go to church, <laughs> I have to, this is your person, we, we're not going to stand before, it's not going to be no group session. <laughs> it ain't going to be no group meeting when we stand before the Lord. They're like, well, well why did you come? Well, my wife didn't want to go. Well, my son, no, nah, you got to get up. You got to, it's about your one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with the Lord. That has to be the first, that has to be first in your life. Because when your relationship is good, then everything else has the potential to be good. If your personal relationship with the Lord is stable and healthy, your balancing act is off to a great start. Come on, somebody. You're on the right track. Come on, it's, it's, a, it's good to be on the right track. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. Let's look at number two. We're moving right along. Number two, the family. The family. So after you got yourself together, it's time to get your family together. It's your responsibility. It says right here, do you, do you know that as the heads of the household, and I said heads of the household, you have the responsibility of leading the family to a healthy and balanced life that leads to success. Now, the reason I said heads is because both parents hold the responsibility. It ain't all on one parent. The, the, the husband has a responsibility. The wife has a responsibility. Working together, balanced a balanced household is going to bring success to the children in the household because we're doing it. We're both doing our part. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on. I'm trying to help us. I, man, I, I, I love this topic because this is something that's important to me, the family. Me and my wife are going on, what, 33 years of marriage in next month on the 23rd of June. We dated four years before that. I, I, you know, it was important for me to make sure that the family was healthy. 
I, I was trying to escape a lot of the drama. So there were some things I had to do. It's just not going to happen just by happen's sake. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, I know that many have taken on this role uh, as the head of the house for various reasons. We have some single moms in the house. We have some single dads in the house. You know, uh, some grandparents are raising children. But this, can, this, this applies to you. Come on now, and, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit more, but it, it, when it comes to the family, when it comes to the spouses, uh, uh, I'll get there. But hit, check this out. You have a responsibility. You can do it. I know you may be raising them by yourself. Now, uh, I, I said earlier, I'm not here to put my dad on blast. <laughs> I'm not going to tell all his mess. But I, what I will say is he didn't get saved until I was about 19 or 20. So he was doing his thing. But my mom got saved earlier. So when my mom got saved, she said, I got to get these kids in church. There's five of us. Now, we, uh, we, live in the, we live in South uh, Ontario, South Side in the hood. So she was like, I got to quit my job to get home and raise these five boys while Pops went to work. So he, he, did, he, did, he, he, he did that part. He provided, but there was no spiritual. The spiritual part wasn't coming from him. That was coming from my mom. My mom was my choir director. She was my Sunday school teacher. <laughs> she was my home Bible study teacher. <laughs> and I, there was nowhere I could turn. <laughs> Everywhere I looked, there she was. <laughs> and when I was sitting in church on that third or fourth row, she was in the choir. She was looking right at me. You better not move. If you move, I... Mm, I, I They're scared. I don't even know if I heard the minute. All I'm just watching her watch me. <laughs> but, but, but look at the results. Oh, come on, somebody. That, that if you do what you're supposed to do, I don't care if you're doing it by yourself. God will honor it if you get your stuff in order and start doing what you're supposed to do. Check this out. Here are some instructions for the family. Married couples. Any married couples in the house? I know it is. All right. I know you're here. Don't be trying to put that hand up. Your spouse looking like, you married? Ain't we married? Get your hand up. <laughs> so here it is, Ephesians 2, 25, 21 through 25. And further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means to submit to your, your husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, you're the head of the wives, Right? Uh, uh, for a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, you wives submit to your husband in everything. For husbands, this means to love your wives just as Christ loved the church and, and what he gave up his life for her. So there, in, in this scripture, we see that there is a requirement for, for balance to be able to happen and to, to have success in the family. First of all, each person, each head need to be submitting to Christ first. Then they need to be submitting to one another. And then wives need to be submitting to their own husbands. And then husbands need to love their wives just as Christ loved the church. There's a big debate going on about which one is harder. <laughs> submitting, a wife submitting to the husband... <laughs> Our husband loving his wife like Christ loved the church. There's a big debate about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas. <laughs> I have to side with the, with the wives because it's hard to submit when a man ain't leading in the right way. <laughs> oh, that, that, I, I, don't, I don't know, but when, when, now, now, now when my wife, it's, when, I, when, when I'm doing the right thing, it's easy for her to get alongside me and come. It's like, oh, honey, I'm with you. I got you. I love you. But when I'm not, I've heard her get behind thee, Satan. <laughs> Lord, get a hold of this. I don't know what he's getting ready to do. I don't know what he's thinking about. But, but the point, but this is amazing because even when you submit, when they're making the wrong decision, if you submit under God's authority, he's going to even bless the mistake. He'll turn them with something bad into something good because you stayed in the God's order and even submitted under a circumstance you might not even agree with. 
oh, just trying to help somebody. Man, but to love the wife like Christ loved the church? Come on, we can all relate to <laughs> how jacked up we was. And Christ still loved us? Turned our back on him, walked away, got an attitude. Then, then Christ is saying, I still, he, he is still showing unconditional love, not giving you what you deserve, but giving you what you don't deserve no matter what. Come on, that's a tough kind of love. That's why Jesus was the only one who could do it. We can't put up with one person that we don't that molest the whole world. <laughs> but I hear here's the thing. This is a blessing because if you ain't got no spouse, no worries. <laughs> you can skip that part. <laughs> that don't even apply to you. It's just you, the Lord, and whatever else you won't do. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 through 35, Paul said, if I, if I was you, I'd stay single. Because <laughs> you ain't got to worry about running home to cook no meal. You ain't got to worry about, you know, do I, if the kids going to act right. You ain't got to worry about how you can be at the church all day. <laughs> Come on, she said, that's her life. She ain't trading in for nothing. That's a good life. I remember that life. <laughs> I'm for real. But I like my new life better, honey. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I love this married life. <laughs> God didn't call me to be no monk. <laughs> now, some he did. I, 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 praise God for you. I ain't going to force you to get on my side, but don't be trying to drag me back to your side. It says, in order for this to be accomplished, you have to be, in order to have this type of marriage, this type of union working together, you have to be spending quality time together. Because where there's unbalance, this, is, this one area in your marriage is probably the one that will be affected the most, and it'll have the greatest fall. Now, let me just help you guys. Is that, is that right? <laughs> let me help y'all real quick. No, oh, no, I got it. <laughs> Let me help you guys real quick. So we talking about balance, right? So I'm pretty well balanced. I think I'm doing real good. But my wife, she had an issue. She was like, we need to spend a little bit more time together. I'm like, what? <laughs> we just went to the, to, the, to the movie with the church. We just went to the theater. No, she said that was a church event. <laughs> that don't count. <laughs> If the church went out there, we wouldn't have been there. Well, we just hung out with the family. Out there. That's a family event. That don't count as no date. That ain't no date night out. Well, we started counting. Everything become a date. <laughs> so I got a little attitude. I got defensive. And the Lord reminded me of scripture. It was out of Proverbs. It said this, that good advice will bring, will, 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 will good, if you take the good advice, it will keep you out of trouble. Correction brings success. She wasn't saying what I wasn't doing. She was just saying, can we just get a little bit more time together? So I'm like, Lord, well, what does she want? Well, she's been talking about the motorcycle for the past two months. <laughs> I had to ask the Lord for help. <laughs> I'm like, I'm lost now. <laughs> Lord said, would you get the motorcycle out and take it for a ride? <laughs> it's real simple. Some things we think are complicated, and we get, we the oh, Lord, now we mad. We walking around. The Lord is just like, it's just as simple. She'd been asking for a motorcycle ride. So I pulled it out. I dusted it off. She went upstairs, went to seven. I'm like, honey, we going for a ride. Yeah, right. Let me know when you're on the motorcycle. Because yeah, it's been that long. So I'm like, I'm going to do this. I ain't going to get attitude. I'm going to get the motorcycle. I got the motorcycle ready. On Mother's Day, she preached at the, at the Pomona campus, got home, told her, we rolling. You know, so I said, we going. I, I got it all ready. And she said, where are we going? I don't know. I'm going to ask the Lord, north, south, east, or west. I don't even have no plan. We just going for a ride. <laughs> you don't even need a plan. Just go. <laughs> so I said, well, let's head south. I looked at the weather. I kind of did something. I was like, well, Holy Spirit, which way you want me to go? It all was going to be too hot going to the desert, too much wind that way. I'm going towards, I'm going south. We drove south at about 40 miles. We come up on Temecula, downtown Temecula, walked in. We never go to eat dinner 
we never go to dinner on, on you know, those days because it's so crowded. But we were able to go walk into a restaurant, had a great dinner. Had, we didn't get until about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. But I'm talking about balance. <laughs> I didn't have to change nothing else. I just needed to implement something that was lacking in the marriage to be able to have balance so that when I get up here and preach, when I do other ministry, I'm able to be effective. Because if I don't handle that, then how can I do this? Let's keep going. Fathers, here's another point. Fathers, do not provoke your children or to anger, whoever the head of the household, by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. This word provoke is to call into action, to arouse, excite, as to provoke to anger, what? Or wrath by offensive words and by injury. Stop cussing your kids out. Stop talking crazy to them. Encourage or motivate them. Yeah, discipline. You got to discipline. That sometimes you have to punish them, but you got to be encouraging and uplifting. And don't everything is not negative. They they spill a glass of milk, just wipe it up, clean it up. That, that ain't nothing to go off about. <laughs> How much milk have you spilled? <laughs> well, we forget we done spilled all kind of. <laughs> some of us clumsy. Everything we touch fall. <laughs> But instead, Proverbs 22, 6, direct your children on the right path. When they are older, they will not leave it. To leave means to go away, to depart, to desert. So even if you bring them up in the Lord from a little, stop letting the schools teach them. It ain't even the church's responsibility. We're here to come alongside of you. But if you teach them from here, when they get older, nobody's going to deceive them about the truth because it's in them. It's got to come from you. You need to take the primary responsibility for teaching your children the word of God. Not the school, not the church, not the youth ministry. Think they're doing an awesome job, but you got to do your part. We're going to come along and support you with what you're showing them and what you're teaching them. Number three, number three, uh, employment. Oh, somebody got a problem with this one. I know we're in a new age now. You don't want to go to work. But you got to go to work. It's biblical. Genesis said this, Genesis 3, 24 and 25. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden. He sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed a mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. They were, they were forced to find their own food and shelter. Adam was, right? Adam had to fight through weeds and thistles and all that. Why? Because of the fall. Uh, we're still in that state. Somebody just need to hear that. The wives are still giving, uh, giving birth, and it's painful. Now, all of a sudden, guy, you ain't got to go to work. <laughs> Why is it like, I'm still suffering in childbirth, but you ain't got to go get a job? <laughs> the word ain't changed. These both, both of these are still required today. Work for food and shelter and suffer in childbirth. But look at 1 Timothy 5.8. It says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those in his household, he has denied the faith, and the Bible speaks of him as a worse than an unbeliever. Let the word speak. Come on, go get some employment. Go get a job. Stop. The, come on, let's get it done. Now, it's funny, when I started dating my wife, Kathy, right, uh, her dad knew I was a Christian while we were dating. You know what his next question was? Do you got a job? <laughs> That's all he wanted to know. Because <laughs> he ain't trying to keep providing while I'm, when, when he hand over to me, it's my responsibility. He ain't trying to hand over and he still got to do the job. <laughs> And I know in many, many cases, both spouses are working today. Come on, where are my Proverbs 31 women? Oh, come on, you in the house. 
And, and today it takes both couples, both sometimes both working. That's fine, but make sure you have balance. Come on, you working so hard. Come on, you can't cook at the, you can't bring a meal. You can't come home and cook. You down here at the church cooking, go cook at the house. Oh, I'm tired. I'm done cooking for the day. What? <laughs> Where's that in the Bible? I done served at the church, so I can't serve you at the house. If you serve at the church and you ain't serving at the house, then the church, your, ser- your church service is going to be uh, uh, impacted and it's going to be a great fall. Oh, just trying to help us. My wife always tells me, you know, I get to the church and I'm quick to open the door for somebody at the door, but then she's like, you ain't open my door. <laughs> I open doors all day at the church. Oh, can I let me get the door for you? Let me, let me, my wife comes and come on, get the door. <laughs> Matter of fact, you hold, hold, hold the door for me. <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> then you wonder why you got problems. Check this out. God has, uh, uh, I'm finishing up with this one. So here it is. Now, I, as I was saying earlier, you know, I was born in the, in the, in the hood. I was born in South Ontario. And uh, uh, I, I'd never, you know, 19, 20, 27, 20, I'd never been on a plane before. Never flown anywhere. So my wife got that good job, and she was traveling. Had a Hawaii account. I'm like, I'm going. <laughs> you ain't going to Hawaii without me. <laughs> I flew to Hawaii, and everything was good, but that was good. It was just me and her, but when the kids started coming, she told the job, look, I got to give up these accounts. Are you going to give up your Hawaii account? I got to get home. I got kids. I got to take care of my family. I can't be traveling all over the world. She had to let that go. I was kind of tough in the beginning, but I was like, Lord, she's doing the right thing. <laughs> Sometimes you got you to gotta let stuff go to be balanced. We're talking about balance. Come on, somebody. I got one of my DG guys who had an opportunity to, to get, uh, make a great investment for some properties, but he was like, the Lord spoke to me and said, not right now is not the time. My marriage, we're, doing, we're, on, we're on a good roll right now, so I got to let, I, I got to have to turn that down, right? Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to turn stuff down so to make sure you balance, because if you're balanced, whatever you turn down, God's got something better for you down the road. If you just do what you're supposed to do here, I'll take care of you over there. Balance, yeah, he go take that job, take that opportunity, and then what happened? Everybody, everybody struggled, everybody left behind. And now you got problems. Last but not least, ministry. Christians are called to serve others. And it's a part of our balance. It's a part of our balancing act. Whether you're volunteering in the church or serving as a church employee, we all need to be reminded what the Bible says about serving others. Look at 1 Peter 4.10. It says, God has given each of you a gift from what? A great variety of spiritual gifts. He said to use them to do what? Serve one another. God didn't save us to sit. He saved us to serve. So I got everything in order. Let's serve. And we're going to be able to serve right, and we're not, it's not going to affect any other areas because we're well balanced. I'm not talking about excluding nothing. I'm just saying get yourself balanced. The Lord is pleased with our service. So just be careful that your serving don't cause you to neglect your personal relationship with the Lord. Right? Don't let it cause you to neglect your family or your employment. Because if you neglect these areas in your life, your ministry is ultimately going to be affected. It's going to affect your ministry. Amen. But check this out. Hebrews 6.10 says, for God is, 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 is not, ju- not just what? He will not, God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for others. What? As you still do. God wants you to care for others. And so you need to be spending time. Now, 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 you know, I just want to say, you know, for you that are working, don't become workaholics. So in my conclusion, I want to say this, and I mentioned it earlier. You, 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 uh, I, I'm going to conclude with this. Check this out. I want to remind you, if you're in a marriage and you're in a family, you're not a monk. 
So don't spend all your time on your personal relationship. I'm not saying don't develop your personal relationship, but don't spend all your time there. The kids are calling. The wife needs you, but you, oh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm in the world. I'm in the world. I'm in the world. I'm in, I got to go do that. I got to go do that. But what about your kids and what about your wife? What about your husband? What about your kids? So you need to have balance even with your study time. Schedule your study time with the Lord and then come out of your study and go spend time with your kids. Go spend time with your family. Come on, you ain't holier than thou. You ain't at another level. Come on, just you, we, we need to be here. We need to be balanced. All right? Secondly, spending all your time with family like family is numero uno. The family is not numero uno. If it is, you unbalanced. Spending all your time working is a, you're nobody but a workaholic. And if you're a workaholic, then that means you're unbalanced. And so when something is unbalanced, as I conclude with this, and it's not put back into balance, there's usually a great fall. And there's a potential for a lot of people to get hurt. And so it's important for you to be balanced, right? So I want you to ask yourself this question. Lord, is there an area where I'm unbalanced in my life? If so, reveal it to me so that I can get into balance in that area. Because when you're balanced, then there's nothing that God can't do through you and your family and your ministry and your work. A balanced life, a healthy person, a healthy family, all extends from a balanced life. Come on, let's give God some praise. Stand to your feet with me. <clears throat> and I know this is, this is hard. It's hard. But you can do it with Christ. The first order of business that we talked about to be able to have anything balanced has got to start with Christ. It's got to start with your relationship. <clears throat> and the important thing for you, the, the first thing is to make sure that you have a relationship with the Lord. That comes through salvation. Because if you don't have Christ, there's no way you can balance a family according to the word of God. And so maybe you're here today and you've never given your heart to Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Give your heart to Jesus and let's start, let's get on this balancing act that God has for you to bring balance to your life, bring structure to your family. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this is something that's just dear to my heart. And this is something that I've, I've learned and I've, my wife will tell you, I've always I've tried to, tried to pr practice this in my life. Because it was important for her, it was important for me, and it was important for my kids. Because my daughter, like, whenever something sounds crazy, that's, that's against the word, she'll hit me up like, Dad, that don't sound right. I'm like, honey, you're absolutely right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is not the, But she know. Why? Because she was trained. She was taught the truth. When you teach them the truth, they don't have to worry about them. Somebody deceiving them, tricking them, and them getting caught up. Because they, when you put it in when they little, oh, somebody got to get this. When you put it in them when they little, and I don't know why the Holy Spirit, but you guys, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm, I'm just saying this, I'm not speaking against our education, I'm not talking about teaching, I'm saying, but the system today, you guys got to bring your little ones home and teach them. Them, them babies, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, you, because that's where they're developing their minds to take, accept all this stuff. You might, you might have to bring them home and you might have to teach them for the first few years. And, pre and prepare them for what this world is trying to teach them. It's another level that you got to go to to make sure that your kids get the right foundation. But in order to do that, you got to be on the right foundation for yourself. It starts with Jesus. And maybe you're here and you've never given, them to, given, given Jesus your heart. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. The Bible says that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he rose again for your sins. If you confess him as Lord and Savior of your life, then you're on the right track. You are saved. And on the count of three, if that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. You already know the Spirit speaking to you. I'm going to just count to three. One, two. On the number three, you're going to raise your hand and say, I need this Jesus. I'm off balance and it's starting with my relationship. But I want to get it right right now. Altar workers, please come. Come right now because they're going to come. 
and I want you to be ready. On the count of three, you're going you're to raise your hand and say, I'm ready to receive Jesus. I need him in my heart. One, two, come on, three, get that hand up. Come on, I see that hand, I see that hand. Come on, I see that hand. Come on, I see that hand over there. Come on. Before you guys, I'm going to have them to come, but I want to give one more call uh, to another group before they come. If you're here and you, have, you, you walked away from the Lord, you're here today because the Lord says, come back. I, I, let me fix it. Let me get you back in order. Let me get you back balanced. He's married to the backslider. You did, he didn't leave you. You left him. But he's waiting right there saying, come on back. I'm here. Let's get back on track. If that's you, I want you to just slip your hand up real quick. Come on. Put it up. One, two, three. Come on. There it is right there. She's coming home. She's coming home. He, she's coming home. She's coming home today. He's coming home. She's coming home. She's coming home. Come on. We ought to celebrate. You know what? The Bible says when one person, when one person, when we stop one person, get them back on the right track, there's a celebration in heaven. There, there, I see that hand right there. He's coming back. Coming back. All right, for all those that raise your hand, I want you to come to the altar right now. Come right now. Don't hesitate. Come right now. Come right now. Oh, come on. Come on. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Come right now. If you raise your hand, we need you to come. We got it. We're going to let you know your next step. There they come. There they come. There they come. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Bless you. Bless your family. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Oh, they're still coming, you guys. They're still coming. We might need some more altar workers. If you're an altar worker, come and help. We need your help. They're still coming. They're still coming. Come on, God wants to restore your family. He wants to get, he wants to get you back balanced. He wants you to have order. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, we're almost done. Is there anyone else? There's another one coming. 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 He's making his way. He's making his way. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Come on, ain't nobody mad but the devil. He's defeated in the name of Jesus. This is going to transform your life. You follow this order, it's going to transform your life, transform your family. It, it is. Believe it. I got one more call. I got one more call. And the Lord has prompted me to make this call because somebody is praying for a family member. Somebody's believing for a family member. And you've been praying and you've been praying. The Lord is saying, bring them to the altar. He said, bring them to the altar. If he's speaking to you in regards to that, you come to the altar. We're going to pray with you. You've almost, you've, matter of fact, you started, you gave up praying. You gave up praying because you just don't see nothing happening. God is saying, come today. And we're going to agree with you. He says, if two or more come together and agree on anything that he's here. And I'm, I'm, I'm serious because what's going to happen is you're going to walk down here. Now, one day you're going to walk down here with them, and you're going to be like, I remember when we prayed, and then all of a sudden they just seem like, and I want you to understand, they may get worse before they get better because sometimes God got to put you in a pit to get you out. But don't go by how it looks. Go by what you know. Stand on the word. Continue to believe God, and he's going to bring them out in the name of Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. I see God is breaking stuff right now in the name of Jesus. He's breaking it. See, God knows our heart, and he moves in accordance to our hearts. And you cry it out. Let him know, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm surrendering. I'm ready to do it your way. I'm ready to get my family on the right course. We all want family success. Who don't want family success? Who don't want a family that serves and loves God? Everybody want that. Well, here's how we're going to get it. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray for those. I want you to pray this prayer with me, the prayer of salvation. Huh? Yeah, and uh, for those that are praying the prayer of salvation and rededicating your life to the Lord, 
uh, and of course, anyone at this altar that is ready for a next step, we have starting at the way. They're going to get your information, and they're going to hand you a pamphlet. You're going to take that, and then you'll get a phone call. That's your next step, right? It just This is where it starts, but you got a next step. You got to take the next step. You got to apply the next step, and then you're going to start seeing the results. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I confess that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. I repent from all the things that I've done against you. Forgive me now. Now, Lord, make me the kind of person you want me to be. I am now born again. Father God, I come in the name of Jesus. I pray for these that have come to this altar that are standing in the gap for a loved one, for a family member that has been hurt through that process of a broken family. But I pray for their restoration. I pray for their deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement. You said if two or more come together and agree on anything, I'm going to stand in agreement with these families, with these mothers, with these, with these fathers, with these grandmothers that are standing in the gap, these husbands, these wives that are standing in the gap. We stand with them in prayer that you will bring their loved ones home to you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Let us say together, amen and amen. Pastor Christian. Amen. amen. Can we give God some praise if you received that word today? Healthy families. Thank you, Pastor Todd. Let's give Pastor Todd a round of applause coming up from Pomona campus to bless us. We love you. We want to remind you that youth conference is two weeks away. You have a chance to send your teen to youth conference or you can even sponsor a teen as well. It's going to be powerful. We're going to see probably a thousand teams here in this room receiving Jesus and getting set free. It's going to be powerful. But we love you so much. Have a wonderful Sunday. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. Come this Wednesday night for our midweek service. It's a powerful service every Wednesday, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We'd love to see you here. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless.